Hello and welcome to another episode of today's GK. I am Pooja Devi, and in this segment, we bring to you objective questions on a daily basis to help you crack prelims. So let's begin with the practice question of last segment. Consider the following statements with reference to antibodies. They bind to the surface structures of bacteria or viruses and prevent their replication. Producing antibodies is difficult and time-consuming. They are therefore probably not suitable for widespread use which of the statements given above is or are correct a1 only b2 only c both 1 and 2 d neither 1 or 2 so i hope you have answered it correctly in the comment segment the correct answer for this question is c both 1 and 2 both the statements are correct an international research team led by university of bonn has identified and further developed novel antibody fragments against sars cov2 the virus that causes covid-19 antibodies are an important weapon in the immune system's defense against infection what do they do they bind to the surface structures of bacteria or viruses and prevent their replication so if we talk about antibodies these are released as proteins and these are y shaped in structure and these are released by the plasma they are the line of defense against any kind of pathogen intruding a human body so if we talk about the first line of defense as they are also known as immunoglobulin immunoglobulin m is the first line of defense in the comment segment please tell me how many types of antibodies are there all right let's move further one strategy in the fight against disease is therefore to produce effective antibodies in large quantities and inject them into patients however producing antibodies is difficult and time consuming they are therefore probably not suitable for widespread use of course nanobodies are antibody fragments that are so simple that they can be produced by bacteria or yeast which is less expensive moving on to the first question of today's gk consider the following statements about the suction campaign The campaign aims to convince consumers to switch to cleaner fuels. It is launched by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A one only, B two only, C both one and two, D neither one nor two. The correct answer for this question is A. That is one only. Moving on to the explanation, Petroleum Conservation Research Association, Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. has launched a month long mass awareness campaign saksham to spread awareness about green and clean energy the idea of the campaign is to convince consumers to switch to cleaner fuels and bring in behavioral change to use fossil fuels intelligently so as we know under the paris agreement india is determined to reduce its emission of carbon footprints of gdp by 33 to 35% if we compare the levels of 2005 and 2030 all right so until and unless the normal people the citizens of india do not actually know why do we need cleaner sustainable energy until and unless they know about it they won't switch to it that is why a grassroots level campaign such as saksham will be of great help in making the citizens aware of it and further bring a behavioral change moving on the campaign will highlight the adverse health and environmental impacts of increasing carbon footprints let's move on to our next question which of the following committees proposed the formation of a bank investment company sirangarajan committee bimal jalan committee basel committee pjnaya committee So the correct answer for this question I hope you know it it's D P J N I committee the reserve bank of india has recently raised concerns over the issuance of zero coupon bonds which were so much in news for recapitalization of public sector banks in this light the finance ministry is examining other avenues for affordable capital infusion including setting up of a bank investment company The bank investment company was proposed by the PJNI committee constituted by the RBI in 2014 to examine governance 
at the public and private sector banks. So most of the time, because of the lack of proper governance, non-performing assets keep on accumulating. That is why PJNI committee was formed basically to review the working of the boards of the of the different banks. All right, and the committee, in its report, recommended transferring shares of the government in the banks to the bank investment companies, which would become the parent holding company of all these banks. As a result of this, all the public sector banks would become limited banks. Let's move on to our next question. Consider the following statements about the grid connected rooftop solar scheme. The Ministry of Power is providing a 30% subsidy for the first 3 kilowatt output. The scheme is being implemented in the states only by local electricity distribution companies that is DISCOMs. All right. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, neither one nor two. The correct answer for this question is B that is two only. Only the second statement is correct. Moving on to the explanation, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy is implementing grid-connected rooftop solar scheme phase second to generate solar power by installing solar panels on the roof of the house. As we know that India is a country which has so solar supply, that means supply of sunlight in abundance as it is one of the Surya Putras. That is why solar energy harvesting will be of very much use to India. But it needs to be affordable, accessible and also quick. Moving on, under this scheme, the ministry is providing a 40% subsidy for the first 3 kilowatt and 20% subsidy beyond 3 kilowatt and up to 10 kilowatt. We also need private investments in this and the scheme is being implemented in the states by local electricity distribution companies or DISCOMs. Moving on to our next question, with reference to the One Nation One ration card system, consider the following statements. The beneficiary will be able to buy subsidized food grains from any fair price shop across the country. A beneficiary will be identified through biometric authentication which of the statements given above is or are correct? A1 only, B2 only, C both 1 and 2, D neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer for this question is C, both 1 and 2. Tamil Nadu has become the 11th state in the country to successfully undertake one nation, one ration card scheme or system reform. This is stipulated by the Department of Expenditure, Ministry of Finance. If we talk about its features, the system enables nationwide portability of ration cards. Under this system, the beneficiary will be able to buy subsidized food grains from any FPS fair price shops across the country. And a beneficiary will be identified through biometric authentication. This will be done via the electronic point of sale, devices installed at the fair price shops, the beneficiary can purchase the quantity of food grains to which he or she is entitled under the National Food Security Act. So if you look at this particular system of One Nation, One Ration Card system, this system actually helps those migrant laborers who move from one place to another and in the meantime when they move from one place to another, they might lose their fair price shop access in order to overcome that this particular system is very useful but there is also one issue that biometric authentication sometimes the migrant laborers do not actually know about it and not aware about this so we need the government also needs to encourage more awareness about it so that they are not lagging behind when it comes to their right to life and right to food okay moving on Let's move on to our next question. Harike wetland, recently seen in the news, is located in which of the following states? Punjab, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra or Odisha? The correct answer for this question is A, that is Punjab. 
Winter migratory water birds using the Central Asian Flyway have started making a beeline to Punjab's Harike wetland. Harike is one of the largest man-made wetlands of northern India which shares its area with the Tarantaran, Ferozpur and Kapoorthala districts of Punjab. It came into existence in 1952 after the construction of a barrage near the confluence of rivers Satlaj and Bees. So if we talk about Central Asian flyaways, these help the migratory birds which moves continents and continents away from their place of actual habitat. So that is the reason wetlands are very necessary for these migratory birds and they are very necessary to restore the ecological balance and of course to maintain it. Moving on, let's talk about it. It is home to birds visiting from as far as the Arctic and Siberia. Prominent birds include the Eurasian coot, grey lag goose, bar-headed goose, gadwall and the northern shoveler. Considered a wetland of international importance, especially as waterfowl refuge, this site was accorded the wetland status in 1990 by the Ramsar Convention. Let's move on to our next question. Consider the following statements about the Ring of Fire. It is a path along the Pacific Ocean characterized by active volcanoes and frequent earthquakes. It traces boundaries between several tectonic plates. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A1 only, B2 only, C both 1 and 2, D neither 1 nor 2. So the correct answer for this question is C both 1 and 2, both the statements are correct. Recently, Sumeru volcano erupted in Indonesia's East Java province. Other volcanoes such as the Merapi volcano from Java and Sinabung volcano from Sumatra also erupted recently. Indonesia, with the maximum number of active volcanoes in the world, is prone to seismic upheaval due to its location on the Pacific's Ring of Fire. If we talk about the Pacific Ring of Fire, the Ring of Fire also referred to as the Circum-Pacific Belt is a path along the Pacific Ocean characterized by active volcanoes and frequent earthquakes. It traces boundaries between several tectonic plates including the Pacific, Cocos, India-Australian, Nazca, North American and Philippine plates. Okay, so if we talk about this last statement, kindly keep in mind where between which countries certain plates lie because sometimes in the prelims they may ask you to match the plates with the countries they are found in between. Alright, so if we talk about the circum-pacific belt, you can see how it is. It is here, the red line that you see. This whole, whole area, right, is the circum-pacific belt. And it is very active when it comes to volcanoes in the sense, why is it so? Because of subduction, as the denser plate is moving beyond, moving beneath the lighter plate. So the denser plate of the ocean is moving beneath the lighter plate. I'm going to draw it here. This is the denser plate. This is going, this is subducting inside the lighter plate, right? So what happens, because of the subduction, the magma, the magma gets activated and it erupts in the form of through the volcanoes. Alright, that is why it is happening. Moving on to our next question, consider the following countries, France, Spain, Germany, Italy. Which of the countries given above are a member of the G7? You have to select the correct option using code given below. 1, 2 and 3 only, 1, 3 and 4 only. 2, 3 and 4 only or all of the above? The correct answer for this question is B1, 3 and 4 only. France, Germany and Italy are the members of G7. So the United Kingdom has invited Indian Prime Minister as a guest to the, attend the Group of Seven for the seventh summit that is scheduled to be held in June 2021. So along with the Indian Prime Minister who else is invited from which other countries along with India, South Korea and Australia are also invited. Moving on, if we talk about the G7, it is an intergovernmental organization that was formed in 1975. The bloc meets annually to discuss issues of common interests like global economic governance, international security and energy policy. The G7 does not have a formal constitution or a fixed headquarter. 
the decision taken by leaders during annual summits are non-binding in nature. If we talk about the members, G7, it is a block of industrialized democracies. France, Germany, Italy, the United Kingdom, Japan, US and Canada. The G7 was known as the G8 for several years after the original seven were joined by Russia in 1997. The group returned to being called G7 after Russia was expelled as a member in 2014 following the latter's annexation of Crimea region of Ukraine. So if we talk about this G7, the group of seven, it is being called outdated. Why? Because of the particular world we are into right now, the contemporary world which, have, which has rising democracies, rising economic powers such as India, China, they are not included in it. That is why it is being called as outdated. Moving on, let's look at our next question. Consider the following statements about western disturbance. It is an extra tropical storm originating in the Indian Ocean. It is an area of low pressure that brings sudden showers, snow and fog in northwest India. These travel eastwards on high altitude easterly jet streams. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A1 only, 2 only, 3 only, none of the above. So correct answer for this question is B, that is 2 only, only the second statement is correct. According to the Indian Meteorological Department, a western disturbance is likely to affect the Himalayan region soon. If we talk about western disturbances, these are labelled as an extratropical storm originating in the Mediterranean and it is an area of low pressure that brings sudden showers, snow and fog in northwest India. These travel eastwards on high altitude westerly jet streams, massive ribbons of fast winds traversing the earth from west to east. east. Western disturbances brings winter and pre-monsoon rain and is important for the development of Rabi crops in the northern subcontinent. Sometimes WDUs can cause extreme weather events like floods, flash floods, landslides, dust storms, hail storms and cold waves killing people, destroying infrastructure and impacting livelihoods. These were also known as winter disturbances in 1931. Moving on, let's look at our next question. The child subsidies scandal recently seen in the news is related to which of the following countries? Belgium, Denmark, Sweden, Netherlands. So the correct answer for this question is D. Netherlands. Moving on to the explanation. The government of Netherlands collectively resigned amidst an ex escalating scandal over the mismanagement of child care subsidies due to which thousands of Dutch families, particularly ethnic minorities, are still facing an insurmountable debt. A parliamentary inquiry found that the country's tax service has wrongly, had wrongly accused over 26,000 Dutch parents of fraud since 2012 and ordered as many as 10,000 of these families to repay tens of thousands of euros worth of child subsidies. The inquiry report concluded that unprecedented injustice had been done to these innocent families as a result of which many faced unemployment, bankruptcy, even divorce. Let's look at our next question piece. With reference to Central Vigilance Commission, consider the following statements. It is a statutory body. It was set up on the recommendation of the Santhanam Committee. It consists of a Central Vigilance Commissioner and not more than four Vigilance Commissioners. Which of these statements given above is or are correct? A. 1 and 2 only. B. 2 and 3 only. C. 1 and 3 only. D. All of the above. So, the correct answer for this question is A. That is 1 and 2 only. The Central Vigilance Commission has directed all ministries, departments of the Union Government to strictly adhere to the time limits for various stages of disciplinary proceedings in vigilance cases since unexplained delay was causing undue advantage or harassment to the charged officials. The Central Vigilance Commission was set up by the government in February 1964 on the recommendations of the Committee on Prevention of Corruption headed by Shri 
के संथानम टू एडवाइस एंड गाइड सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एजेंसीज इन दील्ड ऑफ विजिलेंस सी वी सी आर कंसीव टू बी दस विजिलेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन फ्री ऑफ कंट्रोल फ्रॉम एनी एग्जीक्यूटिव अथॉरिटी मॉनिटरिंग ऑल विजिलेंस एक्टिविटी अंडर द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एंड एडवाइजिंग वेरियस अथॉरिटीज एंड सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन प्लानिंग एग्जीक्यूटिंग रिव्यूइंग एंड रिफॉर्मिंग देयर विजिलेंट वर्क द सी वी सी बिल वॉज पास बाय बोथ द हाउस ऑफ पार्लियामेंट इन and the president gave its assent on september 11 2003 thus the central vigilance commission act 2003 came into effect from that date the commission shall consist of a central vigilance commissioner that is the chairperson not more than two vigilance commissioners those are members let's move on to the practice question for our next segment with reference to india china trade consider the following statements The trade deficit between India and China declined to a 5-year low in 2020, the lowest since 2015. India's overall imports declined due to slump in the domestic demand in 2020. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, neither one nor two. So, I hope you will be able to answer it correctly in the comment segment. That's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching.